Paris in the fall, the last months of the year and the end of the millennium. The city holds many memories for me, of cafes, of music, of love, and of death. Paris in the fall, the last months of the year and the end of the millennium. The city holds many memories for me, of cafes, of music, of love, and of death. As I picked myself up, all I could hear was the ceaseless drone of traffic. Life went on around me, but the explosion was to change my life forever. I examined the jagged glass remaining in the window. It was broken, all right. I considered straightening the table, but I figured it best not to disturb the evidence. I contemplated crawling under the umbrella and pretending none of this had ever happened. The leading article referred to the visit of a Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. That was the only news story. The rest was rumor, gossip, and sensationalism. Then I noticed the writing at the foot of the page. It read Salah ed 1345.
I contemplated crawling under the umbrella and pretending none of this had ever happened. I tried not to meet his stare as I searched the dead man's pockets. No wallet, no papers, no credit cards. The guy's past was a blank page. I needed a stiff drink, but I hated the taste of brandy. Oh, my head. Never again. How much vodka did I drink? Oh, no, don't tell me. What is your name, Shelley? George Stobart, ma'am. Oh, American. She asked the question quite innocently, but I could sense her reserve. It was something which seemed to afflict all Europeans. You look like you could use a little help. I could use a little drink. I feel sick, dizzy, and bruised. I don't even remember the party. Just relax and take it easy. You've been knocked out. You don't say. What happened? There's been an explosion. You should try not to move. Are you a doctor? No, but I used to play hospitals when I was a kid. Can you remember anything at all? No. I need a drink. Pour me a brandy. You could be in shock. No alcohol. What about the old man? Is he dead? Of course not. I didn't want an hysterical French girl on my hands. At least, not right now. Do you remember what happened when the clown entered? I remember that all about Tuni played all right. It was like a funeral dirge. I'd never liked accordion music either. Did the clown speak to the old man? No, he just laughed at him. Then he, he grabbed the old man's briefcase and ran out of the door. Did you see what the old man had in his briefcase? No, he didn't open it. What did the old man do when the clown snatched his briefcase? Nothing. He just sat there like he was frozen. Did the old man try to stop the clown? Oh, he didn't have a chance. The clown dropped his accordion and ran out of the door. That's it. That's all I can remember. Did you know the old man? No, monsieur. I never saw him before. How did the old man behave? Well, agitated. He kept looking about him at the door, at his watch. As if he was waiting for someone? Yes, I suppose so. He was worried about something, that's for sure. If you ask me, he was having an affair. He had that look about him, like a guilty husband. Stay here, mademoiselle. I'm going to look around for evidence. Hey! Huh? 
Stay here, mademoiselle. I'm going to look around for evidence. I considered straightening the table, but I figured it best not to disturb the evidence. Freeze! Hold it right there! Whoa! Don't shoot! I'm innocent! I'm an American! Can't make up your mind, huh? I demand to see the American Consul. Drop your weapons and get down on the ground! Put that thing away, Sergeant Mu. I apologize, Monsieur, but I cannot permit you to leave. Am I under arrest? Ah, uh, no. I would simply like to ask you some questions. En avant! To the cafe, march. What a mess! This bombing is an outrage, is it not? Stop that, monsieur! Stop holding your breath at once! Has it occurred to you that he may be dead, Mo? Oui, monsieur, but I prefer to look on the bright side. Besides, I recall a case where the killer escaped by feigning death. However, in this case, the man is quite dead. Clearly, the killer knew of his presence and... How many times have I warned you about premature extrapolation? All we know is that he is dead. It seemed reasonable to assume... A great detective assumes nothing. Take Maigret, for instance. But, but he was a fictitious character, monsieur. Why, he was no more real than Poirot or Tintin. That's different, Mou. They were comedy Belgians. Anyway, it is unlikely that even you will learn much from talking to the dead. Examine the girl and take her statement, if you can. Et maintenant, to business. Your name, please? George Stobart. I'm from California. And what brings you to Paris, Monsieur Stobart? Travel. I'm touring Europe. You chose well. The city is most beautiful at this time of year, no? Uh, yeah. I guess so. Apart from the bomb blasts. Were you in the vicinity of the cafe at the time of the explosion? Yeah, I was sitting out on the sidewalk. I was lucky I wasn't killed. The inspector passed over my remark with no reaction. Did you see the deceased enter the cafe? Yes, I did. Was he alone? Uh, yeah. And did he say anything to you? No. He was more interested in the waitress. Did you see anyone else in the cafe? Yeah, there was a guy dressed as a clown. He was carrying an accordion. An accordion? Bon, the picture is forming in my mind, and it is not a pretty one. Is the girl all right, Moo? 
she'll leave. She confirms the American statement. A clown with an accordion, no doubt an elaborate and eccentric disguise. Very well. Eh bien, I have heard enough. What do you mean? I am satisfied that you know nothing. You may leave. I hope this little incident does not spoil the rest of your vacation. What about my personal safety? Can't you at least give me some advice? What can I say? Stay alert and look out for suspicious characters. And don't cross the road until the little man shows green. Great advice. I honestly believe you are in no danger, monsieur. Should you remember anything of importance, please contact me. My card. Thanks. That is all. You may go. There's not much to go on, monsieur. On the surface, no. But what lurks inside the subconscious? If the door can only be opened. Are you serious, monsieur? I thought your interest in psychic detection was purely academic. Academic? You are about to witness a scientific breakthrough. Excuse me, Sergeant. You are the inspector. Go on, monsieur. I was one of the last people to see the victim alive, Sergeant. Does that worry you? Yes, it does. I feel I kind of... I owe it to him to find his killer. That is best left to the authorities, Monsieur. Did he speak to you? Tell you anything? No. He just grinned and nodded. Don't let it trouble you, Monsieur. Go home and try to forget. I really did see the clown. He ran into the alley across the street. Did you follow him? That's your job, not mine. An armed chase through the streets of Paris? That's not our style, monsieur. Inspector Rousseau may be unorthodox, but he's not crazy. Did you find the victim's briefcase yet? No, sir. The inspector gave me specific instructions to guard this door. Until he countermands these orders or backup arrives, here I stay. How did you and Rosso arrive at the scene of the explosion so quickly? You arrived within minutes. Was it a tip-off? Inspector Rosso's sources are a perpetual mystery to me, monsieur. There are some who say he has made a pact with the devil. And what do you think? I think he is the devil. What is Rosso doing with that girl? He is giving her the once-over, as you Americans say. Huh? Once he gets his teeth into a case, nothing will shake him off. Was he serious about all that psycho-detective stuff? Of course. Inspector Rosso is a pioneer and a visionary. His revolutionary methods, once perfected, may change the face of law enforcement forever. I can't see it taking off in L.A. See you later, Sergeant. Excuse me, Sergeant. Please go away, Monsieur.
See you later, Sergeant. Excuse me, Mademoiselle? Hi, my name's George Stobart. Oh, an American by the sound of it. Yeah, that's right, on holiday in Paris. Some holiday, huh? You were here when the bomb went off? Sure was. Sat right out front of the cafe. Did you notice a middle-aged man, maybe 60, with an hat and overcoat? I couldn't believe it. She hadn't even asked how I was feeling. Yeah, he went inside, just before the bomb exploded. You weren't related to him, were you? Oh no, nothing like that. I am Nicole Collard from La Liberté. What's that, some kind of nightclub? Uh, no, it is a newspaper. You're a reporter? I'm a freelance photojournalist. Say, you can interview me about the bombing. You know, an eyewitness account. Minutes after the outrage that shook the whole of Paris. You know, real life drama, human interest, that kind of stuff. I'll just stick to the facts, thank you. Did you see who planted the bomb? I know it sounds crazy, but he was dressed like a clown. Oh, God. It's him again. Do you know a police officer called Rosso? Rosso? A pass have a knack of crossing. If I didn't know better, I'd say it was deliberate. Have you seen Rosso? Is he here? He's inside, attempting to question a witness with his psychic powers. What? That guy is weird. Yeah. Rosso didn't blink when I told him about the clown. It's as if he already knew. That is typical of a cold fish like Rosso. I've seen cheeseburgers with more spunk. You speak very good English for a French girl. Thanks. You speak very good English for an American. Who's the guy you were supposed to meet? His name was Planteur. I didn't know him, but he called me last night. He said he had a story which would interest me. He asked me to meet him at the cafe. I guess I'll never know what he wanted to tell me. Well, not unless you have Rosso's gift for psychic interrogation. How did Plantar get your name? Through the newspaper La Liberté. I'd written an article linking two unsolved murders. One in Italy, the other in Japan. The cases were remarkably similar. A wealthy victim, no apparent motive, and a costumed killer. Plantar said he could supply me with more information. Have you met the clown before? It's a long story. I have plenty of time. I don't. Why won't you tell me about this clown? Why do you want to get involved? Because he almost killed me. Isn't that reason enough? I guess so. Listen, I'll give you my phone number. You help me with my story and I'll let you in on what I know. And let's get one thing straight right now. This is strictly business. Okay, it's a deal. I have to go develop these pictures. A bientôt, monsieur. Fine, I'll uh, see you soon. I examined the jagged glass remaining in the window. It was broken, all right. Hi, can you spare a few minutes? I thought you'd been arrested. No, it was a misunderstanding. When he pulled that gun, ka! I thought that was it. Those automatics by quite a punch, you know? He made a mistake. He thought I was a terrorist. You? A terrorist? 
Ha! He was only doing his duty, I guess. Did you see a clown come by this way? A clown? Like, in a circus? Yeah, with makeup and a big red nose. Ho! Oh, those guys are funny, aren't they? Not in my experience. I love the circus, especially the horses. You haven't answered my question. Have you seen a clown? You think I've got time to watch everyone who passes by? Some of us have to work for a living. Look, I know you're busy, but surely you'd have noticed a clown. I told you already! I didn't see a thing! He was wearing multicolored baggy trousers and makeup. It'd be a poor sort of clown if he didn't. Listen, I have to find that clown. He's a killer. Say, who are you anyhow? A cop? No, of course not. I mean, do I look like a cop? I guess not. How do you know this guy's a killer? Did you see him in action? Didn't you hear the explosion? The cafe was blown up. I wondered what that bang was. Any... bodies? Yeah, an old man was killed. Merde. I didn't think it was that serious. What about the waitress? Oh, she's fine. Thank the saints. Did you see an old guy with a briefcase? Wait, silly old coot. Do you know what he said to me? Work fascinates me, he says. I could watch it all day. Care beat. I could have knocked this block off. Did you recognize the old man? No. Should I have done? Was he a celebrity? No, but I guess he is now. His name was Plantau. Was he the one who died in the cafe? Yeah. That's too bad. Now I wish I hadn't called him what I did. If only I could turn back the clock. If only I'd been more tolerant. Regret and remorse are strange emotions. They really bring out the hammiest actors in people. I gotta go. Don't let me keep you. Hey, you! What do you want now? I gotta go. Don't... Hey! Stop that! Get away from there! What do you think you're doing? I was... admiring your toolbox. Are we? Had a good look, have you? I'm warning you! If you touch it, I'll crack your nut! Okay, I get your point. Hey! Don't touch! Okay already! The door was securely locked. The door was securely locked. I considered climbing the lamppost, but it wasn't going to shed any light on the affair.
I took a deep breath and prepared to climb the drain pipe. I guess the clown had an escape over the rooftops. I decided I'd had enough of messing with that drain pipe. I examined the boxes closely. They were damp and smelly and decidedly empty. I examined the I'd had it with sticking my nose into French trash cans. I'd had it with sticking my nose into French trash cans. There was nothing of interest. I tried to lift the cover with my fingers, but couldn't gain any leverage. Hey, you! What do you want now? Would you like to read my newspaper? I haven't got time to read that. Can't you see I'm busy? You could read it on your lunch break. Ten minutes is all I get. And if my boss had his way, I wouldn't get that. He'd have me on a drip, so I didn't have to stop to eat. Oh, take the newspaper and quit complaining. Bah! Look at this! Damn bleeding out liberals! Cha! Save the dolphins! Catch them and eat them, I say! All that fuss over a bunch of fish! Nah, that's more like it! Look at the size of those! Like champagne bottle corks, no? Ah, what's this? Saleh Dean running in the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe! It's a racehorse? A horse? A legend! Bucephalus reborn, mon ami! Like a streak of lightning she is! Do me a favor, won't you? Keep an eye on my hole. I'm off to put some money on that nag. What about your toolbox? Stuff it! Help yourself! I'd found just what I wanted, a tool for lifting manhole covers. The door was securely locked. It was a metal rod with a handle at one end and a short cross piece at the other.
The card read, Augustin Rosso, and gave an address to the south of the Montparnasse Cemetery. The card read, Augustin Rosso, and gave an address to the south of the Montparnasse Cemetery. The card read, Augustin Rosso, and gave an address to the south of the Montparnasse Cemetery. I lifted the cover to reveal what smelt like the entrance to a sewer. I scooped up the sodden tissue. It was cold and greasy, like breakfast leftovers. Hi there. Hold it right there, you... you sewer rat. <laughs> I knew you'd come back. And now I've got you. What are you talking about? You're trespassing. Come out of there, immediately. That's what I'm trying to do. Give me your hand. Ha! You won't catch me with tricks like that. Keep your distance, monsieur. Okay, okay. Now, what were you looking for? Terrorists. The meanest, nastiest, dirtiest bunch of guys you ever saw. Ah, uh -huh. Englishmen without a doubt. The filthy dogs. The day they opened that tunnel was a bad day for France, I tell you. If I still had the full use of my faculties, I'd march right over there and tell them so. Well, whoever they are, they blew up the cafe. What? 
The cafe? Blown up? Mon Dieu! That is awful! The guy who did it was a calculating, cold-blooded killer. He was disguised as a clown. I followed him into the sewer, and I think he came this way. Ah, mon dieu! Then, the man I chased. Do you think that man and the clown are... one and the same? Well, yes, it had crossed my mind. Ah, that still does not explain what you are doing down the sewer. For all I know, you are in league with him. Oh no, I'm just a tourist. <laughs> Most tourists are content with the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, or the Pigalle. I didn't realize my waste pipes were such an attraction. Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Well, I, I didn't notice. Uh, now are you going to leave, or do I have to call the police? Do you know the waitress at the cafe? Oh, hey, she isn't hurt, is she? No, she's fine. Oh, thank heavens. A poor girl like her isn't safe with the likes of you roaming the streets. Can't you understand? I'm not a gangster. I'm an American tourist. <laughs> ah, that's what you say. Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Who is he? The man who was killed in the cafe. I'm going to find the guy responsible. I'll find him. Even if it means following him down every sewer in every city in Europe. Ah, you'll need some sensible boots. You won't get far in those stupid sneakers. Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> what is there to tell? He was a typical criminal type. <laughs> Just like you. I have to be going. I'll let you out. Thanks for your time. Go on, be off with you. Hi there, remember me? <laughs> How could I forget? The man with the uh, sewer obsession. It's not an obsession. I just like the ambiance. What does this tissue mean to you? Nothing, monsieur. It's uh, mm, disgusting. Someone had emptied their nostrils into it. Perhaps you'd like to take a look at my card? Mm -hmm. What is this? Inspector Augustin Rousseau? What does that say? Uh, Arminoid Division. A homicide. I think the ink's smudged. Mm -hmm. Then you are not a tourist. Okay, I'm not. I lied to you. And I'm sorry. Don't apologize, monsieur. You know, I had a feeling there was something different about you. It is your posture, your, your poise. Oh, yes. There is no mistaking the bearing of a, a disciplined man. And uh, I should know. I was in the army, you know. When I was your age, I was fighting for my life in the African desert. Uh, how can I help you, Inspector? Let's start over from the beginning and tell it just like it was. Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Why, yes, he was. Clutched in his arms like a baby. That belonged to his victim. Oh, what do you think was in it? Drugs? Stolen jewels? I don't know. 
but the killer thought it was worth a man's life. <laughs> Nothing is worth that, monsieur. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? <laughs> you, you, you can't suspect her, ah, surely. Just answer the question, please. Yes, uh, I know her quite well, you could say. Uh, she came to work at the cafe oh, uh, six, uh, seven months ago. I look forward all week to the relief she gives me when she visits. Really? So you'd miss her if she wasn't there? Oh, mais oui! Who else would I find to cut my toenails? Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, monsieur. Who is he? The man who was killed in the cafe. I'm going to find the guy responsible. I'll find him. Even if it means following him down every sewer in every city in Europe. Bravo! Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> he was a mean one, monsieur. He grabbed me in an arm lock. His face suddenly next to mine. His grip was like iron. But he did not know what he was up against. Oh no. He made a big mistake when he took on one of the desert hyenas. Yes, yes, I get the picture. I have to be going. Good luck, Inspector. I hope you catch that killer soon. Bonjour, Kula. Oh, hi. It's George Stobart, the American at the cafe. Ah, oh, oui. Uh, you said to call if I could help. Have you any news for me? I found the clown's escape route, I think. You think? He ran into a blind alley and took to the sewers. Very apt, but then what? I don't know. Maybe I could come see you. I really am very busy. Oh, okay. I'll keep searching. Good. Be sure to let me know if you find anything. You can count on it. See you. Sergeant Moo? Uh, yes. 
I know the identity of the dead guy. His name was Plantow. Is that so? You knew him, did you? No, but... We'll know everything there is to know about him soon enough. I'm trying to be helpful here. The best way you can help us is to go home, monsieur. I've tracked down the clown's movement, Sergeant. Is that so, monsieur? Yeah. There's a man down the street who saw him crawling out of the sewer. Dressed as a clown? No. He changed into ordinary clothes by then. So, how did he know it was the clown? He didn't, but all the clues add up. Little children can add up, but I wouldn't let them manage my bank account. See you later, Sergeant. The cover was too heavy and awkward to lift with my bare hands. There was nothing of interest. As I picked up the plastic ball, I realized it was intended to be worn. It was the clown's red nose. Sergeant Moo? Uh, yes. I found this red nose in the sewer. What were you doing down there? Fishing for clues. That's where the clown went. You still insist you saw a clown, monsieur? Of course. And this novelty nose proves it. It will take more than a plastic proboscis to convince a spectre or so. You don't want this as evidence, then? Certainly not, monsieur. See you later, Sergeant.
I took hold of the scrap of material and unsnagged it from the spike. It was the scrap of material I'd found in the sewer. The fountain had probably been attractive at one time, but now it looked like an old stained urinal. The door was locked. Hello again. Uh, yes, Inspector. Does this piece of material mean anything to you? Ah, that is the same cloth as the jacket I found. I'd recognize that pattern anywhere. Take a look at this false nose. Aha! Uh -huh. That looks like a clown's nose to me. Precisely. He must have dropped it in his panic. Unless he wanted you to find it. Why would he want to do that? To put you off the scent. Now, about the jacket you found. Do you have it here? No, monsieur. One of the sleeves was badly torn, so I sent it for repair. A pity, because otherwise it was a fine piece of quality tailoring. It had the tailor's name inside on the label. Where did you send the jacket? I gave it to an itinerant Romani seamstress. Just my luck. Was there anything in the jacket pockets? Mm -hmm. Not a sou. You know what I think? Do tell me. Mm -hmm. 
He changed out of the clown suit and cunningly disguised himself as an ordinary person. Hmm. Looks like I'm up against a mastermind. What was the name on the label? Ah, it was a foreign name. Todrick, I think. Did you get the address? There wasn't one, monsieur. Only a telephone number. Well, I don't expect you to remember a phone number you've only seen once. 74980859. You're kidding. That's his phone number? Yes, that's it. A little trick with numbers that I learned in the desert. I was taught the technique by a Tuareg shaman. That's incredible. <laughs> it comes in handy at the supermarket checkout. Uh, do I get a reward? Honesty, monsieur, is its own reward. Then I'm glad I do not rely on honesty to pay the bills. I have to be going. Thanks to your help, the citizens of Paris can sleep a little easier tonight. Vraiment? I was only doing my duty, monsieur. Good luck, inspector. I hope you catch that killer soon. Hello? Who is this? Hi. My name's George Stobart. You don't know me. Correct, Mr. Stobart. I don't. What can I do for you? Well, I'm trying to trace one of your customers. Could I maybe come over and talk to you? No. No. That's not possible. 
Oh, okay. Uh, forget it. Listen, all I want is a name. What are you talking about? Who are you working for? I guess you might say I'm acting in the interests of truth and justice. Ah, thank God. I thought you were the police. There are innocent lives at stake, Mr. Todrick. Lives that you could save. You're collecting for charity, yes? No, I'm not. All I want from you is information. Go on. I'm listening. What do you know about the clown who bombed the Café de la Chandelle Vert? I don't have no idea what you're talking about. You're cool, Todrick. But I think you know more than you're saying. I don't know who you be, but sure I am you don't know what you're talking about. I don't know if you're saying that to make me think you don't know what I mean, but... Oh, this is ridiculous. Quit playing games with me, Todrick. I tell you, I know nothing about no clown. Did you know that one of your customers was a part-time clown? If a guy feels happy with a funny nose and custard down his pants, what's the problem? Do you know a guy called Plantar? No, I never heard of him. Shall I tell you what happened to Plantar? How he was killed in cold blood? I told you, I never heard of Plantar. I expect Plantar's a family man, don't you? In their little apartment, Madame Plantar is cooking the supper, listening for the familiar sound of her husband's key in the door. Junior is waiting for his daddy to come home from work. He can't wait to show him the merit marks he earned in school today. Only tonight, Monsieur Plantar won't be coming home. You forgot the puppy. Huh? The faithful puppy dog, waiting for the sound of his master's voice. Well, maybe they don't have a dog. What do you think? I don't know, Plantar. I never heard of Plantar. None of this has anything to do with me. Thanks for nothing, Todrick. Bonjour, couleur. It's me again, George Stobart. Hi, George. Any news? You bet. I met a witness who spoke to the clown. And I know where the killer gets his suits. No kidding. Hey, I'm impressed. You are? Well, it wasn't easy. Look, why don't you come here to my apartment? Fine. Where do you live? 361 Rue Jarry. Okay, I'll come right over. Excuse me. Not so fast. I'd like your personal details, please. Huh? What for? In the event of an accident. It would help us to know where to send the body. Look, is this really necessary? I came in here to talk to Rosso. Ah, uh, why did you not say? Is Sergeant Moo available? What? You want to speak to him? Yes, please. I cannot recall the last time someone asked to speak to Moo. No one ever speaks to him. Not even his kids. Ah bien. He is not here, monsieur. He is with Inspector Rousseau. Like Laurel and Kitten. No, monsieur? Hardy. Oliver Norville Hardy. May I see Inspector Rousseau? He is not here. But... Do you wish to leave a message for him? I have a choice of blue or black pen. I'd recommend the blue for a less formal communication. I'd prefer to talk to him in person. As you wish, monsieur. 
Do you know anything about Rosso's psychic techniques? I cannot comment on my superior's methods. All I will say is that Inspector Rosso has an impressive record. He's a good detective? One of the best. He's a man of honor with a fine sense of duty. You wouldn't say he was uh, a screwball? Not to his face, monsieur. Have you had any reports concerning a suspicious clown? Why, yes. There was a fracas only this morning. Three arrests for public disorder. And you say there was a clown involved? A clown and a particularly offensive piece of sculpture with balloons. Are you in any way involved with the reprobate, monsieur? No, not me. Thanks for your help, officer. It wasn't the style of the clothes in the shop that caught my eye, but the prices. The same amount of money would feed a starving family for the rest of their lives. I guess people who buy that kind of stuff don't have a problem with their consciences. The window was full of overpriced clothes for overprivileged women. There was no way of lifting the securely locked blind. I glanced without much interest at the fruit. It was dusty, shriveled, and tired looking. I inhaled deeply, expecting to experience the scent of the flowers. What I got was traffic fumes. Oh, hi. Bonjour, monsieur. Would you like me to foretell your future? Uh, no thanks. I'm very good, and it only takes a minute. Thanks all the same, but I'm not superstitious. Besides, if it only takes a minute, that's not much of a future to look forward to. I've changed my mind. Will you tell my fortune? You're going on a long journey. My oh my, what a surprise. Can you tell me anything I don't already know? Ten francs, please, my dear. Ten francs? That's a rip-off. Please yourself. How does this fortune-telling routine work? If I knew that, I wouldn't be selling flowers for a living. Haven't you ever wondered why you were blessed with the gift? Well... It's a bit like satellite television, I suppose. Some of us are born with a, a built-in receiver dish. I just happen to be one of the lucky ones. Can you really foretell the future? Only time will tell, monsieur. The strange thing is, I can't seem to see myself in the future. Other people? I have no problem. But when I try to see what might happen to me, nothing. That must be scary. Maybe. I figure it's a kind of natural safety mechanism. Either that, or I don't have a future. Do you know a young woman called Nicole Collard? Yes, I do. She lives upstairs from me, in the apartment block across the street. The door isn't locked, but you'll need to give it a gentle nudge. It sticks, you see, 
because of the damp. The landlord said he'd fixed it before winter sets in. He's been saying that for three years. How long has Mademoiselle Collard lived here? A few months. She's in for a shock when the cold weather comes. Drafty windows, insufficient heating, it's a struggle to keep warm. The only reason I stay is because the rent is cheap. Your young lady, she deserves better. I thought Mademoiselle Collard was a successful photographer. Not as successful as she makes out for all her fine clothes. Oh, I've heard her crying herself to sleep at night. That's awful. Now don't you let on that I've told you. She's proud, that one. Too proud, if you ask me. Are the flowers for sale? Oui, monsieur. Okay. I'll take a bunch of those white ones. I wouldn't do that if I was you. No? They are lilies, monsieur. Some people associate them with death. Yikes. Well, thanks for telling me. What other flowers do you have? Dahlias. What do they signify? Insecurity. Hmm. I don't want to give her the wrong idea about me. What about the tall yellow ones? Those are iris, the flame of passion. And the little yellow ones? Sensuality. Well, they're no use to me. I want to make an impression, not jump down her throat. See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. Remembering the flower seller's advice, I pushed the door gently just above the lock. Bonjour. I'm glad you could make it, monsieur. Please, call me George. Fine. I'm Nicole. Take a seat, George. Eh bien? And what have you been up to? I've been exploring the sewers beneath the cafe. I thought I could smell something bad. The clown used the sewer to escape and to change out of his costume. I guess he was in a hurry. He left his jacket behind. And? I got his tailor's phone number. He had better luck than I did. Luck, she said. Luck! Hard work, I'd call it. What happened? I took my photographs to the editor, but he wasn't interested. Can you believe it? He told me to drop the story. But you're not about to do that. Oh, no. I am going to find out what's behind these killings. You know what I think? It's a conspiracy. The police in three different countries have kept very quiet about the murders. The press don't connect them at all. They blame them on political, religious or militant minority extremists. Well, that covers just about everyone. Tell me more about the clown's previous victims. The first was Arno Belota, the millionaire pharmaceutical baron. He made his money from amphetamines in the post-war slimming and diet boom. Imagine it! Millions of housewives literally speeding their butts off. Was he killed for his money? No. He had no living relatives and his fortune went to the orphanage where he'd grown up. The only witness in the case was his Filipino au pair. She swears he was led to his death by a snowman. What about the clown's second victim? Yamada, the controversial Japanese green politician. He inherited his fortune from his father's electrochemical consortium. He was committed to dismantling Japan's automobile industry. I can't see him gaining much support with a loony policy like that. Yamada was a man of vision. He was years ahead of his time. If you say so, how did he die? At the end, 
Or should I say slippers of a giant emperor penguin? A snowman, a penguin, and now a clown. You know, I hate to admit it, but this is scary. And I'll tell you what, I won't be accepting any invitations to costume parties. I don't blame you for being scared. I am too. But this story could be my only chance of a big break. Or a premature death. May I use your telephone? Sure, go ahead. Thanks. Hello? Who is this? Mr. Todrick? Oh, it's you again. What now? Forget it. May I use your telephone? Sure, go ahead. Thanks. I'd better be going. Thanks for coming, Monsieur Stobart. Call me George, and it was my pleasure. If I track down the clown, I'll let you know. Oh, hi. Hello, my handsome friend. Do you recognize this nose? No, monsieur. What can you tell me about this material? It's a very expensive piece of cloth, monsieur. What can you tell me about this tissue? Nothing. See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. Hi, it's me again. So I see. I found this tissue down the sewer. That's disgusting, Georges. I think the stuff on it is grease paint, like actors use, or clowns.
It's still disgusting. Get rid of it. I found a piece of material near the cafe. When I showed it to the concierge, he recognized it right away. It's very distinctive, all right. Just wait until you see this. I developed the film I shot at the cafe. Here, George, it's an enlargement I made. Look what that guy's wearing! Checkered pants. The same material as I found in the sewer. That's right. This guy shouldn't be difficult to find. Oh, no? Take a close look at his left cheek. A scar in the shape of a horseshoe. Oh, a crescent moon. How come you enlarged this photograph of me? Because I noticed the guy behind you, of course. Tell me more about yourself. Oh, there is not much to tell. Well, how did you get into photography? I guess I owe that to my father. He bought my first camera. I was eight and my parents had just split up. Did you live with your father? Yes, my mother went off with her new boyfriend. I don't mind. Papa was all I needed. Four years later, he died in a plane crash. Ah, I'm sorry. Well, it's all right. I don't mind talking about him. He was more like an older brother, really. Always joking and laughing. Papa always wanted I should study art. That's why I went to college. Did you learn about photography at college? Oh, God, no. I couldn't afford the materials. We were billed for everything we used, paint, canvas, paper. Most of my year turned to minimalism. It was cheaper. I used to go poaching in the park for squirrel hair. The only time I wasn't hungry was the term I did printing. I used to eat the potatoes. You're making fun of me, aren't you? Oh, no. Do you have a boyfriend? That's none of your business. I'm going back out to search for that clown. Where? I don't know. Maybe there's something I overlooked. Okay. Well, good luck. Oh, hi. Hello, my handsome friend. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Hmm, what a hunk. He's a killer. I can see that. His eyes say it all. See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will.
Hi, it's me again. Again? Yes, I spoke to you earlier. But of course. It is Monsieur Hardy. Stobart. Uh, George Stobart. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, Monsieur, I do not. I have no memory for faces. I found this tissue. I? What the hell is that? It's evidence. Evidence of what? Mayonnaise smuggling? The sticky stuff is grease paint. Ah, and that is supposed to make me happy, is it? I suggest you think long and hard about what you are doing with your life, monsieur. I found this red nose near the Café de la Chandelle Verte. A clown's nose? That's right. The guy who wore this is a savage killer. If you say so, monsieur. Thanks for your help, officer. Hi. Bonjour. Ah. Stobart. George. It doesn't matter. Hey, you! What do you want now? Do you recognize this tissue? Certainly not! Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, I don't. What do you make of this clown's nose? It would be more amusing if you were wearing it. I borrowed this tool from you while you were gone. Keep it! I can afford to buy a new set now. What's in the toolbox? What's in the toolbox? As if you didn't know. What's the big deal about tools, anyhow? They're cool. Tools are civilization. You don't say. That's right. Tools are what distinguish us from other animals. Who are you calling an animal? I've met your sword before. Looking down your nose at me because I'm working class, huh? I've a good mind to knock your block off. What kind of tools do you keep in your box? Huh? You really are interested in tools? Sure, like I said, tools are... Yeah, civilization. So you keep saying. So are you going to show them to me? Am I? Why, you? Aw, oh, come on. Just a little peek. I've got work to do. Find someone else to bother. Do you have a tool for lifting manhole covers? As it happens, I do. Cool. Lend it to me, uh, just for a few minutes. No. Oh, come on. No. Get your own. Let me explain what I'm going to do with your manhole lifting tool. Let me explain what I'm going to do with my peek. Oh, hey, forget it. I'll come back when you're in a better mood. It doesn't get any better than this. I gotta go. Don't let me keep you. Sergeant Moo? Uh, yes. Do you recognize this dirty tissue? No, monsieur, I do not. I found it in the sewer. Perhaps it would be better if you put it back there. No way. This could be an important clue. If you say so, monsieur. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, monsieur. It's the guy who bombed the cafe. 
the clown. This man looks nothing like a clown? He's taken off his grease paint and costume. Then there is nothing to link this man with the killing. Nothing? Look at those murderous eyes. Hmm. Hardly likely to get him convicted. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No. It's the guy who bombed. This man looks nothing like a clown. He's taken off his grease paint. Then there is nothing to link this man. Nothing? Hmm. Hardly likely to get him convicted. See you later, Sergeant. Hello again. Uh, yes, Inspector. Did I show you this tissue? Oh, we miss you. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Yes, I do. It's that villain I told you about. Take a look at this false nose. You showed me before, monsieur. I have to be going. Good luck, inspector. I hope you catch that killer soon. Hey, you! What do you want now? Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, I don't. I gotta go. Don't let me keep you! Sergeant Moo? Uh, yes. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, monsieur. It's the guy who bombed the cafe. The clown. This man looks nothing like a clown? He's taken off his grease paint and costume. Then there is nothing to link this man with the killing. Nothing? Look at those murderous eyes. Mmm. Hardly likely to get him convicted. See you later, Sergeant.
I decided I'd had enough of messing with that drain pipe. The door was locked. The toolbox didn't contain anything else I needed. I examined the jagged glass remaining in the window. It was broken, all right.
I contemplated crawling under the umbrella and pretending none of this had ever happened. I considered climbing the lamppost, but it wasn't going to shed any light on the affair.